Hi, welcome to this week's 10 minute book review. I'm 10. Unfortunately, two couldn't be with us today. Um, hopefully she's be, she'll be able to make our next review. So to get right into it, today's review is going to be on, was it her? By Chanel Hardy. So this is the book that's going to be reviewed today. So we uh, like to give a star point at the beginning of each video as well as a reading for uh, what it would be if it, would, if it was a movie. So for a star point, we give this a 9 out of 10 stars. It was very well written, very well written. Um, the characters were... Very, well, well, I'm going to say the characters are fleshed out, but really there's one main character and then there are side characters along with her who um, help to make up the cast of the book or the players in the book, depending on how you see things when you read them. So they are, they're different voices, although the main voice that we hear in the book is the main character who is Amita. So give this a 9 out of 10. It was really good. Um, for a rating, I would the only reason why I'd rate this PD, PG 13 is because there is murder in it. Um, there's nothing excessive in it. There is some language, but not excessively. Um, and it's based on teenagers, so it really isn't something that a younger reader should do, should read. But um, I think a mid teen, mid teen to adult would be just fine with this. So to get right into it, um, we make notes at the beginning of each book. If you follow our Instagram, you've probably seen this set of notes already, but... So, the main player in this book is Amita. I don't want to mispronounce her name, so I'm going to do my best. Matua? Matua? Matuya? Uh, she is a teenager at the beginning of the book. Well, she's a teenager by the end of the book, too. It spans about a year. This happens, what, in the summer? So, yeah, it spans about a school year. Um, so her parents, her mother is a nurse, her father is a firefighter. So they're, I want to say blue-collar workers. They're not rich. They have a nice home, but a moderately nice home. Um, and she lives in a moderately nice area, kind of like a suburb. Um, her best friend Benjamin, he's kind of the bad boy. He's been to juvie. He has long hair, you know, dirty sneakers. I don't know, to me, the dirty sneakers is a turn off. <laughs> it's like, dude, I know you're supposed to be bad, but wash your sneakers. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Um, so those are our main players Amita, who's called Mita. Benjamin, her best friend, um, and her parents. Those are steady players. So to start you off, we meet Amita when uh, she's finding her boyfriend's body. So she went to go over to her boyfriend's house. They're their teenager, so she wants to go over watch Netflix. To just chill out, you know, watch a movie. And when she gets there, looking all cute and everything, she finds her boyfriend stabbed to death. One thing I like about the author is that she didn't glorify how things looked. She mentioned that Amita had vomit on her flip-flops because she threw up because she saw her boyfriend dead. And that she didn't immediately call 911 because she was like freaked out because her boyfriend was dead. The police of course think that she did it and they go to arrest her and of course her parents are upset about this. But they don't have enough evidence to hold her to, you know, say that she was the one who did it, even though she was the one who was found with him. So, people think that she did it anyway, though. And her boyfriend's parents won't even let her go to the funeral because they, they're like, you did this to my son. I can't prove it, but you did it. So, everyone in town basically hates her, aside from her best friend, Benjamin, and of course, her parents who love her. So, she goes through therapy in regards to it because, of course, she's traumatized. She's... Thinking about it, even being her boyfriend, someone that she liked, she, she saw a dead person. She walked in on a dead person, not just a regular, you know, passed out dead, but someone who had been stabbed to death. So she walked in a very, walked into a very bloody scene. So of course she needed therapy. 
Um, she decides to go back to school. Her parents so you don't have to. You can be homeschooled. We, you know, can work things out. But she decides to go back to school. And uh, Benjamin is there for her. And on the first day back, she sees a girl that she doesn't really like or doesn't really like her. Later on in the book, the girl claims to have gotten pregnant by her boyfriend. Now, when I say that the guy was her boyfriend, it was her actual boyfriend. It wasn't like, he he, don't tell anybody, I won't tell anybody, we're secret boyfriend, girlfriend. No, it was her actual boyfriend. So this other girl, I believe her name was Carla? Yeah, I believe it's Carla. Let me just have a look. But yeah, this other girl is like, you know, I got pregnant boy by your boyfriend. And so she's like, wait, what? How did, I yeah, Carla. So she's like, wait, how did that even happen? It's like, my boyfriend has a totally, like two lives. And then drugs get involved. It looks like her boyfriend may have been a mule, which, you know, just someone who runs drugs for someone else. And so she's trying to figure out who killed her boyfriend. And that's the weird thing. It's like she's a teenager and she's trying to figure out who killed her boyfriend. Like, this is the police. But no, she wants to she wants to figure it out too. So what ends up happening is she gets pulled into a whole lot of mess. There's a teacher mentioned this, Mr. Nelson. For some reason I just I think of him as a really hot teacher. This doesn't describe him as being a really hot teacher, but Sometimes I think he's cute. I've had two cute teachers in my life. Three. Two hot, one moderately so. Anyway, so yeah, so Mr. Nelson has something to do with it too. Not gonna give that away. Um, some key points. She believes there's a particular woman who did it, who killed her boyfriend. Because she believes her boyfriend was working for the woman um, transporting drugs and selling them. So she goes to confront the woman. Of course, the woman nearly kills her. Like, so it's like, you, if I see you again, I'm gonna kill you. And the next day, Amita finds out on the news that the woman's been murdered. So it obviously wasn't her. So I was thinking, yeah, this is definitely her. We found the person, this is definitely her. When you do find out who the murderer is, it's like, wait, what? How? Like, I, I personally didn't see it coming. Two's not in the car, but she didn't see it coming either. We, we didn't see it coming. So that was interesting. It was a really good read. Um, let me think of what else I can tell you without really spoiling anything. If you're into happy endings, you are. this is a good book for you. I love a book with a happy ending, but I won't only read books with happy endings. Now, here's what qualifies a happy ending for me personally. The protagonist lives... Um, yeah, the protagonist lives. That's all that really qualifies a happy ending for me. The protagonist ends. I mean, the protagonist lives. Because I don't want to spend the whole book getting to know somebody and then falling in love with their character and character flaws and character strengths. And then at the end of the book, oh, they're dead. Like, I, I don't want to, that characterizes a bad ending for me or an unhappy ending so if I tell you it's a happy ending that just takes to me that the protagonist is alive by the end of it so yeah the whole thing is kind of a head trip the way the author writes it is like sometimes you don't know whether it Amita is do okay so but sometimes it seems like Amita might have been the one who did it there was a moment, um, remember I told you about her going to see the woman who she believes might have killed her boyfriend? She catches like an Uber to her house. And it's like late at night. It's like, dude, you know someone killed your boyfriend, right? You're not street smart. She is not street smart at all. Why are you catching an Uber to a drug dealer's house? And then the next day, the drug dealer winds up dead. It kind of made me think like, okay, well, did she catch the Uber to the woman's house, kill her, and then her memory just lapsed? Like, oop, I don't remember doing it. Don't remember doing it. Oh, she's dead now. Oh. So, yeah, that, that was interesting how the writer wrote it in a way, or at least I felt it was written in a way where sometimes I felt like Amita might be having a mental break. But then I couldn't figure out any reason she would have to actually want her boyfriend dead aside from 
You know, finding out that he may have impregnated another student, but she found that out after everything, like after he was already dead. So it wasn't a plausible reason. So every time I, I thought, okay, well, maybe she did do it. It's like, okay, but why would she have done it? I couldn't put my finger on a particular reason that she would have known beforehand. So, um, if this book was a movie, who we would have cast as the main players or the actors would be for Mr. Matoya, you know, the father, her father, we would say he would be Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, um, because her father is a uh, Hawaiian. And any kind of muscular, you know, he's a firefighter, so you know, he got that body. And Mrs. Matoya, her mother, we would say would be Keisha Sharp. If you don't know who Keisha Sharp is, she's the mother, I'm sorry, she's the wife from Lethal Weapon. Um, she was also in Girlfriend. She played that guy's wife, well, girlfriend first and wife. I forgot her name in, in Girlfriends. But she's been in a lot of stuff. Keisha with two E's. Keisha Sharp. Uh, for Benjamin, we thought about Austin Butler. He's the actor who played Wilkie from um, Switched at Birth. He's the white guy with blonde hair, long blonde hair, kind of a long face. And for Amida, we were thinking about Yara Shahidi. I'm saying her name wrong, but I think I'm saying it right. Shahidi from Grownish and Blackish. She was the oldest in Grownish, and now she has her own show on Freeform. Um, I'm sorry, she was the oldest on Blackish, and now she has her own show on Freeform called Grownish. So she's like, I guess, the Lisa Bonet of Blackish. Like the teenager from the, the Black show who grew up to start college and have her own college show. So that's who we would see as um, the main players if this was a movie. The feel of the book itself kind of reminds me of, if you've seen Gossip Girl, you know how in season one you meet Serena and you know there's something up with her and Blair but you don't know what it is? And then in season two, um, you meet the other girl. I forgot the other girl. She wasn't the main player, but uh, she was from Harriet the Spy, the Nickelodeon version. Oh, just I'm talking about it. I can't remember her name. But yeah, how like there's all this intrigue and stuff and what happened to Serena and what, you know, why is all this going on? Is Serena good or bad? Like you want to think she's good, but you don't know. So that's what it kind of reminded me of and also reminded me of uh, Pretty Little Liars just because murder murder so yeah this has been our review for was it her by chanel hardy i'm hoping you can see this really good i'm sorry i'm in my car hopefully you can see this really good and we're gonna put the links in the video i'm sorry in the description as to where you can purchase it and if you would like to see more videos, you know, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Also, too, if there's a book that you would like us to review, even if it's your own, uh, feel free to send us a message. Just DM us on YouTube or uh, send us an email at 10 with an I, 10 minute book review, no S, at gmail.com. So thank you so much for checking in and you all have a wonderful day. Bye.